And now, from west of the roundabout at the Old Farm Studio, in Henders County's capital, Danville, Indiana, it's the Bob Gilbert's Variety Show on TV and HD. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. The Bob Gilbert's Variety Show is copyright year 2020, Liberty Broadcasting, all right reserved, and is produced by Happy Baby Indiana Incorporated for Infinity Video Broadcasting, a division of Bright Eyes Video Entertainment. You use your tongue prettier than a $20 whore. And now, from his Captain Kirk style podcast chair, your host, your old buddy Bob. Oh, a microphony and a phony at the mic. And HH, hi. How are you doing? This is the Bob Gilbert's Variety Show on TV in HD. Yes, everyone, this is our inaugural, very first episode of the Bob Gilbert's Variety Show on TV in HD. And you know, I've been thinking to myself, what are we going to do? You know, I'm used to doing the podcast, but never doing a video. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a classic movie and we're going to critique it. I think my card's in the way. Anyway, yes, so this isn't going to be the best uh, program because, well, I'm just learning what I'm doing here and I don't know what I'm doing very well, so just finally got it to where the um, you know the picture and everything didn't skip so that's what we're doing right at this point is trying to make sure everything comes out crisp and colorful so you can see it although half of my face looks like I've been hitting the head with a blackjack or jack black I'll fix that later Anyway, we're going to take a classic movie and we're going to critique it. When I say we, I'm talking about me and my panel. Let me introduce them right now. Chief Homer Diggins. Hello, everybody. And uh, the lovely Lorraine Bodie. Oh, hi, everyone, and thank you for watching. And, of course, our producer, Marty Beckham. Uh, hello, everyone. So, we're all going to critique a classic movie. Now, it's not going to be a good movie. Because I'm too cheap to buy copyrights. So we took a movie from public domain. This is a movie that no one bothered to renew the copyrights on. They were so bad that no one wanted it anymore. They just wanted it to go away. So we're going to critique a movie that no one wants to see. Do you think that's wise? Well, probably not, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, can we have popcorn? Sure, we can have popcorn. Whatever you want. We're just going to try to entertain people and have them watch a movie that nobody ever wanted to watch. Sounds counterproductive to me. Yeah, the more you people talk, the more I think maybe we shouldn't. Ah, oh, the hell with it. Go ahead. All right. So, right now, without much further ado, our movie this week is from 1957, and it's called Detour. It's about a guy. Yeah. And he does a lot of flashbacks. Yeah. And he goes across country from New York to Los Angeles. Okay. And people die in his presence all the time. Okay, but where's the detour come in? It never does. I think what they meant by detour was, well, I guess life takes detours. Uh, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, let's go ahead and watch the movie and... You'll know what I mean. 
So, right now, let's watch Detour from 1957. Right here on the Bob Gilbert's Variety Show on TV and HD from the LBC. Welcome to Nostalgia Classic TV's feature film presentation, Detour, Yay! starring Ann Savage and Tom right. Neal. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to support our button. channel. Thank don't you, forget to use that please button. please enjoy the remainder of the program. I doubt it. Here we go. Detour, Ed Technicolor. It isn't Technicolor, it's black and white, dumbass. Oh, Tom Neal and Ann Savage. Know them? Nope, never heard of them. Screenplay by Martin Goldsmith. Know him? Nope, never heard of him either. Musical score by a roadie. What the hell is an roadie? I don't know. Oh, the wardrobe designer is Mona Berry. Is that important? Must be. They're keeping it up there an awfully long time. You know, the thing I hate about black and white movies is it always looks like it's going to storm. Very grainy. Well, it is the 50s. Edgar G. Ulmer. Jeez, what a name. Hey, watch it. Uh, yeah. You can get run over out there in the dark wearing dark clothes in black and white. Well, it isn't black and white to him. It's in color to him. It's just black and white to us. Huh? Never mind. Well, here we are. I turned down here at the next block. Thanks, mister. I'll get off there. Oh, they're in Reno. That's the biggest little city. So they say. Want anything else? Jesus H. Yeah, run a brush through that mob. Good God. Me? Yeah, you. Where are you heading? East. Too bad. I thought if he was heading... Kind of rude there, ain't he? I think so. Pushing the salt lake, and I don't like to ride it alone at night. I'm one of those guys who got to talk or I fall asleep. Oh, sure, not much. Your partner, he's got Lou to keep him company, but I ain't got nobody at all. Where Will you, you marry from? me? West. Yeah, sure, I know, but where, L.A.? Maybe. Got a cousin out in L.A. You don't say. Yeah, he's been out. Hey, wise guy. You're not much of a talker, are you? My mother taught me never to speak to strangers. Oh, that's a good thing. Guy. So what? Okay, okay, don't get sore. Uh, don't get sore. Uh, trying to be sociable, that's I'll all. hike my pants up to my chest. Hey, glamorous. You change for a dime, would you? Good God, they're not only rude, they're blind. Let's have something quieter this time, Joe. My head's splitting. Is that what's wrong with it? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is everybody rude in Reno? Done with your coffee? No. And don't rush me, will you? Like he has to poop. Hey, turn that off. Will you turn that thing off? What's eating you now? Yeah, what's eating you? That music? Yeah. Oh, you don't like it, huh? No, turn it off. Now, wait a minute, pal. That was my nickel, see? My nickel, see? And I play whatever I wanted. A slug in a jaw, see? Sure. And if you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. And you can leave here any time you want it. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry I asked. First good piece play tonight and you don't like it. Some people just ain't got any good taste. This beef especially eating in this dump. Oh, that's helpful. Let's make it 30% darker. <laughs> Why was there always that rotten tune? Following me around, beating in my head, never letting up. Did you ever want to forget anything? Did yeah, you ever this want movie. To cut away a piece of your memory or blot it out? You can't, you know. No matter how hard you try. Learning that. You can change the scenery. But sooner or later, you'll get a whip of perfume where somebody will say a certain phrase or maybe hum something. Then you're licked again. Coffee cup looks wooden. I can't believe that you're in love with me. I used to love that song once. So did the customers you're the only one. the old break at dawn club in New York. I can't remember a night when I didn't get at least three requests for it. Sue, 
She was always selling it too. What was she Those selling? It. What's it? Three guesses, and the first two don't count. Kenny G gonna blow on his horn now. All right, everybody, let's crowd in this hundred square foot room and look happy. Hey, Dane, you're stepping on my toes. Paste a fake smile on my face while I look at the camera and play the piano. You're in love with me. You're telling everyone you know that I'm on your mind each place you go. They can't believe that you're in love with me. What they can't believe is they're watching this movie. I have always placed you far above. Okay, everybody, dance. Look busy. Be happy. And try not to bump into each other. And after all is said and done, to think that I'm the lucky one. Oh, that poor person I must have a head injury. That you're in love with me. Yay! Was that flashback really necessary? You know the kind. A joint where you could have a sandwich and a few drinks and run interference for your girl on the dance floor. Yeah. I pounded the piano in there every night from 8 until the place closed up, which usually meant 4 in the morning. A good job as jobs went in those days. People were bored in Reno back then, weren't they? The 50s, there weren't much else to do. There was Sue, who made working there a little... Hey, Sue, how do you do? But how we felt about each other, well, there was nothing very unusual in that. I was an ordinary healthy guy, and she was an ordinary healthy together you get an ordinary healthy romance which you is want to act boots sure but somehow the most wonderful thing in the world all in all i was a pretty lucky guy quite nice with those fingers let me show you what else i can do with these fingers I'll just sit here with a cigarette in my mouth and play the piano till I choke. Mr. Paderewski, I presume. It's beautiful. You're going to make Carnegie Hall yet, Al? Yeah, as a janitor. I'll make my debut in the basement. I don't blame you for being Jeez, he's a beat, dying, isn't he? But you mustn't give up hope. Why, someday... Yeah, someday. If I don't get arthritis first. In the meantime, let's blow this trap. Ow! If you'll forgive the phrase, blow this trap. Break of Dawn Club. Well, it isn't dawn. Like to get some deed, hon? Oh, Jesus, it's so foggy out. there. Are we in London or New York? Well, they had to make the fog okay. so you wouldn't tell that the scenery was painted on the wall. Did you see that drunk tonight trying to paw me? No, what drunk? Does it matter what drunk? Say, so what's the matter with you tonight, darling? That's the third time you started to tell me something and then stopped. What's eating you, Dave? We shouldn't have any secrets from each other, Sue. Next week we're going to make with the ring and the license. You and me will be a team. Yes, that's Yeah, right. we're going to make with it, In see? The I don't get you. We've been struck out. Gets any foggier, they're going to fall in a I'm hole. Talk, darling. Don't you want to marry me? Al, look, I love Who you. Who the hell would? I do, and I want to marry you. But? But not now. But I can't see you. Only Where I the hell did you go? I you can't see anything. Sunday I'm going away. Oh, Make with the fog, see? That's why I hesitated to tell you. But I'm going to California. I want to try That's the place I ought to be. That's the most stupid thing I ever heard of. You Don't dumb you know bitch. Of people go out there every year and wind up yeah. Yeah. Cuspidors. I thought you had better sense. You sound like you don't think I have any talent. Isn't that what you that spit in? Uh, uh no, I think that's a bullfighter. But what about It's a matador, dumbass. Anything to you that you're busting up all our plans? We may not see each other for years. It won't be that long. I thought you loved me. I do. You know I do. But I just want to get away from you because you stink. Well, here we are. Yeah, Al. here we are. What are we going to do now? Al, <laughs> my side of it. I'm young. We both are. And we've got all the time in the world to settle down. Oh, really, darling. What I'm doing is the only sane thing to do. Oh, I... 
I hate the thought of being so far away from you, but... but we'll I'll find a surfer and someday. do him. Maybe you'll decide to come out too later on. So long. Al, aren't you going to kiss me goodnight? Sure, why not? Goodnight. Kiss my ass. Bye-bye. Twinkle toes of the piano again. Jesus Christ, Mozart to Fats Domino, what the hell? Does he have any other expression for his face? Shit, he's having a stroke. Hey, Mac. Tell Beethoven up there I'll give him ten bucks if he shuts that shit off. Hey, they want you to quit. You're bucking the hell out of them. Say, Roberts, you hit the jackpot this time. Ten bucks. Oh. Nice. Well, now I can buy a pair of shoes. So when this drunk handed me a ten spot after a request, I couldn't get very excited. What was it, I asked myself? A piece of paper calling with germs. Couldn't buy anything I wanted. It couldn't... Guy's a ray of sunshine, ain't he? Then I thought of something. Here we go, spit all ten bucks in the payphone. Long distance. I'd like to put a call through to Los Angeles. Miss Harvey. Sue Harvey. H-A-R-V-E-Y. The number is Crestview 65723. Now, is this really advancing the plot any? What, watching telephone operators and telephone wires on a long distance phone call? No, I don't think so. Jesus Christ, man, it's a phone, not a slot machine. Hello, Sue? This is Al. Oh, baby, it's great to hear from you, too. What's that? You do? Oh, me too, darling. I thought I'd go batty without you. I just had to... Huh? Let's save you some money. Let's not have her talk. We'll just have him talk Gee, to himself. Honey, that's tough. We don't need her in this scene. Hollywood don't know the real thing when it's right in front of them. You just stick it out, Sue, baby. Keep going around to those casting offices. I'm sure I don't have play. anything to stick out. Do you remember who you're talking to? put out there. I'll come to you. No, don't try to stop me. Just expect me. Train? Who knows? Train, plane, bus, magic carpet. I'll be there if I have to crawl. Magic carpet? I have to travel by Jesus Christ, is this guy drunk? And then, let's get married right away, huh? I have to get rid of my surfer dudes. That's the stuff. That's what I've been wanting to hear you say. Well, goodbye for now. I'll be seeing you soon. Yes. Yeah. Bye. The only way I could cross kind of a little budget, isn't it? Rides. For even after hawking everything, I only had enough money to eat. Money. You know what that is. Why did you just get in the driver's side of that fun. truck? Little green things with George Washington's picture that men slave for. Commit crimes. Uncle Jed's giving him a ride. 
It's the stuff that has caused more trouble in the world than anything else we ever invented. Simply because there's too little of it. They're not in England. What is everybody driving on the wrong side of the car for? So it was me for the thumb. Didn't know there was desert in Oklahoma. Okay. Ever done any hitchhiking? It's not much fun, believe me. Oh yeah, I know all about how it's an education, how you get to meet a lot of people and all that. But me, from now on, I'll take my education in college, or in PS 62, or I'll send a dollar 98 in stamps for 10 easy lessons. What the hell is he talking about? I think the sun's getting to him. Yeah, that's a way to get a ride. Let's make ourselves look so disheveled. Nobody Coming wants to stop and pick us up. Save your bus fare. But it's dangerous. You never know what's in store for you. You hear the squeal of brakes. Jesus Christ, the guy the can't pack a suitcase with a shit can he? That day in Arizona. Yeah, throw that in the back seat. I'm gonna leave the top down because you smell like Bigfoot's dick. Okay, How long have you been out here? Make sure that door's closed. Why do you stop and pick people up? Do you think I could be a serial killer? Oh hell, what's the you know, what's the chances of two serial killers being in the same car? Rides. Because as it is now, you never know what's right and what's wrong. We rode along for a little while, neither one of us saying anything. I was glad of that. Awkward! I never know what to say to strange people driving cars. And two, you can Do you know what to say to strange people to walking? A lot of rides have been cut short because of a big mouth. So I kept my mouth shut until he started opening up. If only. That little box in the compartment, with it, pal? Hold the wheel, with it. Geez, you want me to drive, too? Oh, shit, a pill popper. Look out. How far are you going? L.A. Wow, you're really traveling, aren't you? You ever yeah, seen well, a grown man naked? For a couple of years at the rate I've been promoting rides. Not much luck, huh? Sure, all bad. Not many like movies about gladiators. Afraid of a stick-up, maybe. I uh, can't blame them. Where are you coming from? New York? Well, New York. Well, well, he's free with the time. information now. Back the at the diner, you couldn't get shit out of him. Right through to Los Angeles. You drive a car? Sure. Whenever you're tired, let me know. I'll holler. I guess at least need a holler. I'm sitting right next to you, fuck nut. Deep scratches in his right hand. They were wicked. Three puffy red lines about a quarter of an inch apart. He must have seen me looking at them because he said, Beauties, aren't they? They're gonna be scars someday. What a Must have get infected and get Whatever gangrene. It, was, it must have been pretty big and vicious to have done that. Right on both counts, New York. I was tussling with the most dangerous animal in the world. A woman. She must have been Tarzan's mate. Looks like you lost the bout. <laughs> Certainly wasn't a draw. You know, there ought to be a law against dames with claws. Yeah. I tossed her out of the car in her ear. Stick it, dames. Was I wrong? Tossed her out of the car? Jesus you know, Christ, how fast were you? you About the same state. Nice, don't you? Yeah. After all, what kind of a dame some rides? Sunday school teachers? Yeah. A little witch. Ah, uh, whores? Thought she was with some fall guy. And me, who's been booking horses around race tracks since I was 20. And I've known a million dames like her. Two million. Yeah. I got the itchy crotch to prove Stopped it. Stop the car, open the door. Take it on the yard, the Duffy sister, I told her. That's good stuff. Is that what the hell did he say? <laughs> but if you want to see a real I don't know, see? Mother, get a load of this. Take a oh. look at this hog. I got that one, Julie. Julie? Yeah, we're just kidding, of course. My dad owned a couple of Franco-Prussian sabers. Kept them on the wall for decorations. Jesus Christ, are you uh, a one nut? One day, the kid and I took him down. The old man wasn't around. Had a duel. He got me in the arm here. Pretty mean cut. Infection set in later. Yeah, I can see that. I'll give me that I shanked him in the gut. It. Yeah. Drew out his intestines, stomach, kidney. He'll be all right, though. Someday. How many more pills are you gonna take, dude? 
pain made me lose my head, I guess. I began slashing. Before I knew it, I'd put the other kid's eye out. That was tough. Well, it was just Jesus an accident, age. of course. Do you know how kids are? I got scared, decided I was gonna run away from home. Old man almost caught me when I was packing my duds. The bloody rag I had wrapped around my wrist hadn't caught his attention. It seemed a bundle for sure. But I beat it when he was phoning for a doctor. I was 15, 16 years ago. I haven't been home since. I stole his car. Pull in there for a bite or something, huh? A bite or something. Brother, was I hungry. I hadn't had anything in my stomach for hours. Yet even with that gnawing in the pit of my belly, I didn't want to be in too big a rush to put on the feed bag. First, I had to make sure this guy knew the score. If I got him down on me, I'd buy a ticket to Hollywood. I'll wait out here for you, mister. Well, if it's the money, don't worry about paying for it. This time it's on me. Well, that's what... Pascal, make nothing of it. You make your first million, maybe you can do the same for me. Come on, New York. I gotta make the West Coast by Wednesday. Come on, baby. Boy, funny. It's Santa Anita named Tired Basco. Give me something to eat, and then we'll He's stop at this motel and... We'll make it all right. He did most of the talking during the half hour we were in the place. I ate. An eight, an eight, he rambled on about his old man, then who I he farted. heard from since he ran away as a kid. Now he happened to become a bookie. And then all about how he got rooked in Miami. One race, 38 grand. They cleaned out my book. How do you like that? That was tough luck. Yeah, and I'm supposed to be the smart guy. Well, you just wait. I'm going back to Florida next season with all kinds of jack. And you'll watch those stinkers run for cover. Yeah, right. Want anything else? No, thanks. I've had plenty. Can we just shut up now and get on the road? <laughs> Let's check there, sister. Oh, just a minute. You're changed, sir. Keep it, sister. Oh, thank you, sir. Call again. I'll be waiting outside for you when you finish work. <laughs> Call again. Sharp check, huh? I have some strange phrases in the 50s. I, I get to drive his jalopy. Pasco slept like a log. After a while, I began to get sleepy myself. I so I dozed off, we ended up in Albuquerque. Soon I'd be with Sue again. The long trip was practically over, and there'd be no more hoofing it down the concrete. I began to think of the future, which couldn't have been brighter if I'd embroidered it with neon lights. It was nice to think of Sue shooting to the top. <laughs> it's amazing what a full belly can do to your imagination. Oh boy, here we go now, another flashback. Is this the only song they got the rights to? Do you think those are three midgets and they just got them standing in a weird area with the lighting on them to make that shadow? Look out! Don't hit that tree. Uh, I'm about to fall asleep. Hey, wake up, bud. Me? No, the guy in the seat. We're about to crash. Mr. Haskell. Mr. Haskell. The cops are behind us. Mr. Haskell, wake up! It's raining. Don't you think we ought to stop and put up the top? Well, you're driving, dumbass. Mr. Haskell, I'm going to put up the top. Isn't this movie called Detour? Yeah. They haven't taken a detour yet. Up until then, I had done things my way. But from then on, something else stepped in and shunted me off to a different destination than the one I had picked for myself. But when I pulled open that door... Uh oh. Mr. Haskell, what's the matter? Are you hurt? Are you hurt, Mr. Haskell? It was the chip beef. Start your sermon. I'll listen to it. But I know what you're going to hand me even before you open your mouths. You're going to tell me you don't believe my story of how Haskell died and give me that don't make me laugh expression on your smug faces. Where the hell is he sitting in the dark? I saw it once he was dead. And I was in for it. Who would believe he fell out of the car? Why, if Haskell came too, which of course he couldn't, even he would swear I conked him over the head for his dough. 
Yes, I was in for it. Instinct told me to run, but then I realized it was hopeless. There were lots of people back down the road who could identify me. That gas station guy and the waitress. I would be in the worst spot then, trying to explain why I beat it. The next possibility was to sit tight and tell the truth when the cops came. How about you put crazy. the top up on the car, I'm then think about it. it. I'm not having my head in the noose. So what else was there to do but hide the body and get away in the car? I couldn't leave the car there with him in the gully. Yeah. That would be what like else? a tombstone. Jesus, fat ass. Dude, I got a ride with a lighter fella. This is not incriminating at all. My idea was to cover him with brush, not to rob him. But then I remember that even if I only drove the car for a hundred miles or so, I would need money for gas. Besides, it was stupid of me to leave all that money on a dead man. Yeah, he ain't not gonna use that, it. I'd have to take his driver's license in case I was stopped for something. Then I'd have to have I'd money to clean the car out from it being so goddamn wet. The would say I did, even if I didn't. My clothes. The owner of such an expensive car would never be wearing them. Some cop might put me in a suspicion. Let's recap here. The guy dies after eating at a restaurant. You drag him into a ditch, you strip him naked, and take his car. That's not incriminating. Oh, jeez, it it's the cops. Hey, you, this your car? Don't you know better than to leave a car with the wheels halfway in the middle of the road? No, it's the dead guys in the town. ditch. What? I'm sorry, officer. I was just putting up my top. I, I didn't think. Well, in the next time, think. I'll let you go now, but watch your step in the future. I know that's a lonely stretch, but cars come by here once in a while, and we have plenty of crack-ups. Thanks. Look, I had to do this in a hurry. I had to pull the dead guy into the ditch, strip him naked, take his money, and put the goddamn top up on the car. Leave me alone, jackass. found a dead man in the gully now, it would be me. Except the registration, the plates, the car. As I drove off, it was still raining. And the drops streaked down the windshield like tears. I kept imagining I was being followed, that I could hear sirens back in the distance. Just how long just it took me to up the dead 60 guy. odd miles to the California state line, I don't know. I lost all track of time, but the rain had stopped and the sun was up when I pulled up to the inspection station. Hello? Carrying any fruits or vegetables? No. Any livestock or poultry? No. I left all my dead guys in the ditch back place, there. Please. Anything in the baggage compartment? This baggage. Charles huh. Haskell, Jr., age that in the brown package eyes, dark hair, identifying marks none. Are you Charles Haskell, Jr.? Yes. Well, remember, if you're employed and you stay over 30 days, you take out California plates. All right, officer, but I'll only be in the state a short while. Right, you can go now. Have a nice day, officer. <laughs> See? I couldn't drive any farther without some sleep. Cops or no cops. I knew I had to hit the hay and hit it hard. I was dead tired. So I passed the Texaco station and pulled into some place where the cops were sure to be suspicious. Mr. Haskell. No. Mr. Haskell. 
ask him. He can't die. We have nothing else to put in the movie here, so let's just put flashbacks of the things that happened ten seconds ago. No. No. It's nice to see you can sleep right through a nightmare. Who's there? It's the maid. Can I come in and clean? Fluffy up your little? In a half hour. All right, sir. Escaping. I fluff your pillow. I give you hand job. Those are some sexy pajamas, aren't they? There was no time to lose. Every minute I had to be Charles Haskell was dangerous. And I'd have to be Charles Haskell until I got to some city where I could leave the car and be swallowed up. Be swallowed up? That meant driving the car as far as San Bernardino. Maybe even to Los Angeles. In a little town I might be noticed. But in a city I should be safe enough. Then, after I ditched the car, I could go on to Sue. But those five minutes at the state line made me realize it might be a good idea to find out a little bit about Mr. Haskell. Then, if anybody asked me questions, I could give the right answers. The first thing I found out was that I had $768. This was a lot of jack. But believe me, it was the kind of money I'd rather not have. The hell is that supposed to mean? Was it Confederate money? And then I found out from a letter Haskell was carting around in his bag that he wasn't the open-handed, easy-going big shot who went around buying dinners for strange hitchhikers. Before I got done reading it, I saw him more as a chiseler. It was written to his old man in California, the one he hadn't seen in so many years. In it, Haskell posed as a salesman of hymnals, of all things. It was easy to see where Haskell expected to raise a new stake for his book in Miami by rooking his old man. Miami? That was about all I found out from his effects. And it was enough. I told myself, Maybe old man Haskell was lucky his son kicked off. He would never know it. But it saved him from taking a flyer in sacred literature preferred. What is this crazy stuff he's talking about? is only half over. Jesus H. Near the airport at Desert Center, I pulled up for water. Desert Center? It's all been desert. Aw, oh, shit. He's gonna pick up a dame. Hey, you! Come on if you want to ride. Of course, that's the thing to do. I'm in a stolen car, posing as a... S somebody I'm not. Going to meet a woman. Yeah, this can't... This can't possibly go wrong. Everybody needs a goddamn hairbrush in this movie. Except for him. He's always got perfect hair even when it's raining. I don't have any money, but you can lick me. Let's skip the formalities and I'll just drive on. You just be quiet. How far are you going? How far are you going? That took me by surprise. I just said I that. I turned my head to look her over. She was facing straight ahead, so I couldn't see her eyes. But she was young. Not more than 24. Man, she looked as if she'd just been thrown off the crummiest freight train in the world. Yet, in spite of this, I got the impression of beauty. Not the beauty of a movie actress, mind you, or the beauty you dream about when you're with your wife, but a natural beauty. A beauty that's almost homely. So you're saying she's so a homely beauty. bitch. And suddenly she turned to face me. How far did you say you were going? Los Angeles. L.A.? L.A. is good enough for me, mister. That's what I was afraid of. What'd you say? Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. You smell like shit. People get in trouble for doing that. What's your name? 
You can call me Vera if you like. You live in Los Angeles? No. Where are you coming from? Oh, back there. Needles? No. Oh, sure, Phoenix. You look just like a Phoenix girl. Are the girls in Phoenix that You go look at the road at any part the of this must have been pretty tired scene. Because she fell asleep not 20 minutes after she stepped into the car. Everybody that sits in that seat dies when they go to sleep. Better watch it. Like Haskell. I didn't like that part of it much. But I didn't wake her up. It wasn't that this girl still worried me. I've gotten over that funny feeling. Uh, for a guy that didn't want to give much information in New York, he sure is talking him now. With her eyes closed, the test has gone out of her. She seemed harmless enough. And instead of disliking her, I began to feel sorry for her. She's not, he's not looking well, at her all creepy, is he? Who was she anyway? And why was she going to Los Angeles? And where'd she come from in the first place? The only thing I knew about it was her name. Not that it made any difference. A few hours more and we'd be in Hollywood. I'd forget where I parked the car and look up Sue. This nightmare of being a dead man would be over. Who this dame was, well, it was First, no my fingerprints are all over the damn where car. Where did you leave this body? Where did you leave the owner of this car? You're not fooling anyone. This buggy belongs to a guy named Haskell. That's not you, mister. You're out of your mind. That's my name, Charles Haskell. I can prove it. It's my driver's Save license. Save yourself the trouble, mister. Having Haskell's wallet only makes it worse. It just so happens I rode with Charlie Haskell all the way from Louisiana. He picked me up outside of Shreveport. You rode? You heard me. Then it all came back to me. All the talk about dueling and scars and scratches. There was no doubt about it. Vera must be the woman Haskell had mentioned. Dun, dun, dun. Me while I slept. Well, well, I'm waiting. My goose was cooked. She had me. That Haskell guy wasn't dead yet. Now I must kill he her. He stretched out stiff and cold in any Arizona gully. He was sitting right there in the car, laughing like mad while he haunted me. Well? There was nothing I could say. It was her move. Vera, whatever her name was, it was just my luck picking her up on the road. It couldn't have been Helen, or Mary, or Evelyn, or Ruth. It had to be the very last person I should ever have met. That's life. Whichever way you turn, fate See, sticks out of the moral of, of this trip. story, don't pick up hitchhikers. Moral of this story? I told Stay her the hell in New York. I believe my story. I should have saved my breath. That's the greatest cock and bull story I ever heard. So he fell out of his car. Cock and bull? Say, who do you think you're talking to, a hick? Listen, mister. I've been around, and I know a wrong guy when I you see sure one. sure have. What'd you do, kiss him with a wrench? Now, wait a minute. What I told you was true. Kiss him see, with a wrench. that's why I had to do it. You think I killed him. Well, a cop would have thought so, too. Yeah, well, maybe they still think so. What makes you so sure I'll shut up about this? Girl, I'm innocent. Give me a break, will you? Because if you don't, I'm going to whop you in the head with a wrench. I'm going to kiss you with a wrench, attention. just like you the said. No see? Now, if there was a reward, but there isn't. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. I'm not through with you by a long shot. Let's see that roll. Excuse me? You asked for it. Is that all Haskell had? Isn't it enough? No, I thought he had more. Not that I know of. You can search me. You think I'm holding out on you? Well, maybe I will at that. Uh. He told me he was going to bet $3,000 on a horse named Paradisical on Wednesday at Santa Anita. He was stringing you along. He meant 300 Maybe. Sure, three bucks, 300 He was a piece of cheese, a big blowhard. Listen, mister, don't try and tell piece me anything cheese, about Charlie. He's a big blowhard. Remember, wow. I knew him better than you did. Okay, then you knew he was a four-flusher. That explains the three grand bet. I'm not so sure he didn't have that three grand. A hey, four-flusher? I believe you. You got all the earmarks of a cheap crook. Now, wait a Shut minute. Up. You're a cheap crook and you killed him. For two cents, I'd change my mind and turn you in. I don't like you. All right, all right, don't get sore. I'm not getting sore. But just remember who's boss around just here. Just remember who picked you, you up, up bitch. If you any arguments, you'll have nothing to worry Jesus about. Jesus Christ. But if you act wise, well, mister, you'll pop into jail so fast it'll give you the bends. I'm not arguing. Well, see that you don't. You know, as crooked as you look, I'd hate to see a fella as young as you wind up Jesus sniffing that eight. perfume that Arizona hands out free to murderers. I'm not a murderer. Of course you're not. Asco knocked his own head off. He fell, that's how it happened, just like I told you. Sure, and then he made you a present of his belongings. I explained why oh, I had to do that. It. Doesn't make a difference one way or another. I'm not a mourner. I like Haskell even less than I like you. Yeah, I saw it. That's good to know. What do you mean? Well, scratches on his wrist. Sure, I scratched him. I'll say you did. So your idea was to drive the car a little way, maybe into San Bernardino, and then leave it. You weren't going to sell it? Sell it? 
So you, you look at the script, did you? Somebody else's car? See, all I want to do is leave it somewhere and forget I ever saw it. Not only don't you have any scruples, you don't have any brains. I don't get you. Maybe it's a good thing you met me. You'd have got yourself caught sure. Yeah, that's Why, great. You dope. Don't you know a deserted automobile always rates an investigation? Huh? Look, the cops find a car. Then they get curious. They wonder where the owner is. So, all right, they don't trace Haskell. They trace you. I never thought of that. The yeah, only safe way to get rid of the car is to sell it to a dealer. Get it registered under a new name. Say, stop at the next store. I want to get a the hell is he going to sell a car that's not his? Okay, as soon as we find a place, I'll drop you off and pick you up later. Nothing doing. You're coming in, too. From now on, you and I are like the Siamese twins. Have it your way. I don't that's get great. the point. The point is, I don't want you to get lost. I'm not going to beat it if that's what you're afraid of. I'll say you're not. Well, I'm going to see that you sell this car so you don't get caught. Thanks. Of course, your interest wouldn't be financial, would it? You wouldn't want a small percentage of the profits. Well, now that you insist, how can I refuse? A hundred percent will do. Yeah, I'll get your right. number, lady. I'm relieved. I thought for a moment you were going to take it all. I don't want to be a hog. A few hours later, we were in Hollywood. And I was recognizing places Sue had written about. It struck me that far from being at the end of the trip, there was a greater distance between Sue and me than when I started out. Vera wasn't kidding with that Siamese twins crack. She rented a little apartment as Mrs. Charles Haskell. When I objected to this, she explained that it was on account of the car. A dealer might think something was funny if he called and found we were using different names. Where did all the luggage come oh, from? Sweet home. Yeah. Well, she had like one Not bag either. and he had like one bag. Now they got like five bags. And this is the parlor. Hey, near mine. I'll take the bedroom. Yeah. This is where I'm going to put all the sure S&M equipment. Here. Open this and jump. Keep the window shut. Okay. Lord. The old crow downstairs said there's a folding bed behind this door. You know how to work it? She wasn't lying. No. I invented it. I don't. You invented the Murphy bed. Some joint. One and you're walking everything. to Los Angeles. Okay. I don't get it. I'm first in the bathtub. I don't know why. I'm second. I figured you would be. After you hear the water stop running, you come in. Boy, oh boy. Sure feels good to be clean again. I must be ten pounds lighter. Gee. You must be. Well, hitching rides isn't exactly the way you keep your schoolgirl complexion. Don't I know it? I wish that guy with the sax would give up. It gets on my nerves. Forget it. Have a drink. She's even homely or clean. Aren't you afraid I might take you up on it? I didn't want to give you a drink. I wouldn't have offered it. Might be a sorry, Ed Roberts. You got yourself into this thing. You should be grateful I'm not turning you in. Why, if I wasn't regular, you'd be in the pen this minute, being photographed, fingerprinted, and being pushed around by the cops. If I wasn't sure. regular, I'd be going you to the bathroom right now. Course. Or wouldn't be. I don't no, know what the hell you're saying. bothering you. No, it isn't. Swan, well, that's the spirit. He's dead and no moment around will bring him back. Anyway, I never could understand this worrying about something that's over and done with. Now look, Vera, for the last time I didn't kill him. Haskell was a sick man. Maybe he was dead before he fell out of the car. I, I don't know. it's the last time. Sure, sure, he died of old age. All right. So it'll make you sociable? You didn't kill him. Coca-Cola. Oh, oh. Thanks. I needed that. Now let's drink the rest of this bottle and do the horizontal bop. Hey, all right. Yeah. 
too bad. But I we don't sound like drunk. Tonight. Well, I think you succeeded. A martyr? As a prima donna's corset. That's good. If you I pardon the expression, tight. tight. Why? What have you got to get tight about? Oh, I don't know. A few things. Huh. You should have my worries. If I had your troubles, I'd stay sober. And I've got the key to that door. Yeah. Okay, so if he killed right. the guy and now she kidnapped right. him. This is getting more well, convoluted every minute. Attitude, Roberts. Well, at least we're 44 minutes in like... now. It can't last too much longer. Sure. But life's like a ball game. You gotta take a swing at whatever comes along before you wake up and find it's a ninth inning. You read that song. That's such a Roberts. All you do is bellyache. I think Speaking I've been drinking things. some of that that they've I'm had been. To make the the film's things. moving up and down. Maybe that's what's wrong with the whole world. Get the professor. People lock themselves out trying to buck fate. Uh, I can see why it. they didn't You're renew the copyright on this movie. Why, well, suppose Haskell would open your door. You'd be playing a harp now. Think of that. Think I don't like harp music. I'm tired of thinking. Worse than the saxophone. There's plenty of people die in this minute. I would give anything to trade places with you. That couch is hideous. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not so sure. At least they know they're done for. The whole movie's they hideous. They don't wondering if they are. Your philosophy stinks, pal. We all That's know we're not gonna what kick stinks. I didn't wipe my ass when it's I took a poop. It's only a question of when. But what got us on this subject anyway? We'll be discussing politics next. Yeah. You're the one that started talking, bitch. Where'd you hide the butts? On the table, sucker. Um, those were right in front of your face. We bought each other with conversation for a couple of hours longer. Every five minutes, one of us was wishing we had another bottle or a radio or something to read. Then finally, we ran out of chatter. I know it's only 11 o'clock, but I want to get up... Holy and shit, around. someone's Use brushing their hair in this Don't movie. Don't worry about that. We've got all the time in the world. Maybe you have, but do you think I want to stay cooped up in this place any longer than I have to? You're batty. It's not a bad place. Pay plenty for diggings like this in New York. I wouldn't like it if it was the Ritz. <coughs> Rotten liquor. You got a mean cough. Want to Rotten do something? smell. That'll be all right. That's what Camille said. Who? Nobody you know. The day in the diet of consumption? Yeah. Wouldn't it be a break for you if I did kick off? You'd be free with all Haskell's dough and car. I don't want yeah. to see anybody die. Not even me. Especially not you. One person died of me. If you did, well, that's all I need. You don't Would like you kiss me you now? Do. Like you. I love you. My favorite sport is being kept prisoner. After we sell the car, you can go to blazes for all I care. But not until then. See? I'm going to bed. Can we advance the plot of this movie, Annie? You're going to come with me. Good night, Roberts. Don't try and sneak away during the night. All the doors are locked. Anyway, if I find you gone in the morning, I'll notify the police. They'll pick you up. Don't worry, I know when I'm in a spot. Well, good night. I hope that portable rack isn't too uncomfortable for you. Don't lose any sleep over it, will you, So did she rent two apartments? Or is that the bedroom? I don't remember. My mind has gone numb. If mine was first. Oh, she left the telephone, see? I'm going to call the police and report a kidnapping and a murder. Well, I don't know what the hell I'm going to report. At least I don't have to chuck quarters in this one. She's kind of angry. Six. Why does he have to count off the numbers for? Two, Is he dense? Three. Well, he just pulled a guy in a ditch. Hello? And got 
kidnapped by a hitchhiker. It sounds pretty dense to me. Hello. hello. I'm only going to say hello once more. No. Not yet, darling. Tomorrow. Maybe. Oh. If this were fiction, I would fall in love with her, marry her, and make a respectable woman of her. Or else she'd make some supreme class A sacrifice for me and die. Sue and I would fall a little over her grave and make some crack about there's good in all of us. But Vera, unfortunately, was just as rotten in the morning as she'd been the night before. All right, all right, I'm coming. Look, Vera, good night's sleep. Make you bitchier? So what? The dealers will be there all day. They'll be there all year, too, but it doesn't wait that long. Shut up. You make us like a husband. Well, do Is I... Is that what you're with? wearing? You sure do, but let's go. Let's go, let's go. I spent 85 bucks and two hours preparing bait, and all you can say is let's go. Preparing bait? What the Come hell on. is she talking about? What the hell is any of them talking about? Well, I haven't understood anything since We've had a few detour. used car lots last night down this way. What do you think we can get for this heap? I don't know. Plenty. You let me handle everything. Good, good. Oh, let me have the steering wheel. I don't 30 know. feet don't wide. Know. I'll squeeze as much out of this guy as I can. If I let it go cheap without a fight, he might think we've stolen the car. And listen, don't make any slips and call me Roberts. That'll cook us. I don't need you to tell me that. You better just sit by and keep your mouth closed. Remember, we're both in the soup if anything happens. Forget it and drive. You're my wife, Vera Haskell. Look, after the deal's closed, let's go back to that place on Hollywood Boulevard where I saw the fur jacket. I won't lie. After the deal's closed, I'm saying goodbye to you. That's right, I forgot. I guess I'm getting kind of used to you. Hmm. Well, that's a habit you can start breaking. Let's try this place in the middle of the block. Welcome to your Ford dealer. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? We're interested in selling a car. If the price is right. Well, if it's in good mechanical condition, it should blue book for about 1600 Tony, take a look at this motor. 1600 Are you kidding? It's a 1937 DeSoto. It's got to go for at least 2200 Well, maybe 1850 Before I let it go for 1850 I'll wreck it and collect the insurance first. <coughs> if I had insurance. Look, maybe it's got two spotlights. While the mechanic inspected the car, we haggled. At last, when we were all worn out, we hit a compromise. His price. Okay, it's a deal. All right, come in, we'll sign the papers. I have the ownership papers right here with me. Look, Vera, in the meantime, will you clean a dash compartment? There may be some stuff in it. All right, darling. 1,850 bucks, that dirty crook. Oh, what's this? In New York, huh? Yeah. But you bought the car in Miami. Yeah. Well, let's see about the insurance. We can either have it transferred or canceled. Uh, what kind of insurance do you have, Mr. Haskell? Uh, uh car insurance? Aren't all the papers there? I don't see any. Surely you know what type of insurance you carry in the car. The name of the company? Yeah, but, uh... Well, if you'll just tell me the name of the company, I'd be very glad to take care of all the details. Well... Is that's mutual? Not yet. Well, don't. Uh, we're not selling the car. Well, wait a minute, Mrs. Haskell. Come on, darling. What's the matter? You change your mind? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I guess I have. But, Vera... Let's go. Cool. You got me out of a tight spot, Vera. But I still don't understand all this. You will in a minute. I almost threw away well, a gold neither line. do we. 1850 isn't to be sneezed at. The car doesn't book for as much as I thought. We're not selling the car. You want to keep it? Now, wait a minute, Vera. You said yourself I wouldn't be safe until the car was in someone else's name. I'd like to be free of this mess when I go. That's just it, Roberts. You're not going. Oh. There's a driver in the next corner. Pull in there and we'll get a bite to eat. And I'll explain. What is this, another one of your brilliant ideas? Look, Dame. 
I want to get out of here, see? Oh, can I take your order? Make mine a ham sandwich and coffee. And for you, sir? Oh, I don't care. The same. Thank you. Get this, Vera. I've been pretty patient so far. I've done everything you asked me to do, but no more. Shut up. You've taken Haskell's money. And you can have the dough we get from selling the car. But you're not going to keep me a prisoner. It's a good thing I bought the paper. Take a look at that. Vera, I'm in no mood. Read that. There's a sale at Penny's. No. Yes. No, I won't do it. Yes, you will. You think I'm crazy? It's impossible, I tell you. Excuse me. Something better happen soon. We're almost done with this movie. Thank God. No one could possibly get away with an act like that. He'd be wise to me in a minute. Don't be yellow. You look enough like him. The same coloring and the same build. See how his clothes fit you? No kidding, you almost had me fooled for a while. Oh, grow up, Vera. Don't you think a father knows his own son? And there must be other relatives. Did you give me a ham sandwich? Well, wait till he gives up the ghost. He's an old geezer and he won't pull through. And as far as other relatives are concerned, they haven't seen you in 15 or 20 years. Eat. I'm not hungry. And I won't do it. It's not as tough as it sounds. You ordered a ham Remember, sandwich. All kinds of Give it here, I'm hungry. Car, letters, I could never get away with it. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. The old boy has scads of dough. Stupidest thing I ever heard was there. detour. Personal fortune assessed over 15 million. He'll leave plenty, I tell you. Maybe he cut off his son. How do we know? It's out, Vera. I won't have anything to do with it. I think you will. Look, Vera, I'll do anything within reason. But not that. So forget it. I'll find yourself another stupid. I'll do anything within reason. I'll drag a dead body into a culvert. A culvert? You can take your inheritance and go uh, away. A culvert? No more worrying Shut about up. the rent, no sweat and scheme and wondering where your next meal's coming from. Think about that, Roberts. Vera, please, you're talking too loud. Could you I be a little I'm louder? I'm 50 with you. Sure, why not? We're both alike. Both born in the same gutter. Now take it easy, Vera. There's people around here. You don't know what you're talking about. We'll wait till we read that old man Haskell's dead. Then you show up. Like you read in New York that he was sick? No. Suppose he doesn't die. He will. I know he will. Something tells me. Now stop supposing and start fixing. But as much as I insisted I would have no part of her scheme, Vera was taking it for granted I would. So I did. Neither of us had our mind on the cards as we played that night. I knew we were just trying to kill time between newspaper editions. This was a death watch for Vera. Maybe it was for me, too. Don't you realize if I'm caught, they'll want to know where I got the car and stuff, and they'll have me on a murder charge. If you're smart, you won't get caught. Try not for seven. And if I'm caught, don't you realize you'll be out too? 18 points, that gives me 30. How will I be out? You'll be out $1,850 we would have gotten on the car. Really, Vera, you'd be an awful chump if you threw away all that dough in a dizzy long shot. Let me sell the bus tomorrow. With the money it'll bring and what you've already got, a clever kid like you can Sell run up the in no bus time. tomorrow. And we both be in the clear. I'll be in the clear anyway. Maybe. Maybe. Remember, we're back in 1957. I, caught, I wouldn't know how to talk to anybody. I'd get good and sore at you, you know. You mean you'd squeal? Well, no, not squeal exactly. Never mind what you meant. Even if you did tell the cops I was in on it with you, what could they do to me? They might give me the same medicine they gave you. Yeah. A rope. But I'd still do hangings in 57? Uh, just go with All it. All they'd be doing will be rushing it. All right. But think of the 1850 you'd lose. You'd kick yourself along the block if let get away from you. I'll take the chance. Want another drink? You're being a goon. That's the way people wind up behind the eight ball. Once they get a few dollars, they become greedy and want more. You busy, my, ditch. My. Caesar. Who? You know that Roman general? He got his for being greedy. He Roman wasn't satisfied, general? so the final wind-up was he took the count. A couple of days ago, you didn't have a dime. Why, you were so broke, you couldn't pay cash for a postage stamp. Now you've got almost $700, with 1850 in the offing. Take my advice, don't try for more. I'm tired of this game. Let's have some blackjack. Play solitaire. OK, I will, if that's the way you feel about it. That's the way I feel about it. Getting sore and throwing things won't help much, Roberts. I'm really doing you a favor. I help you out of a jam by keeping my mouth shut. I show you how to make some soft money. And what thanks do I get? Thanks. Sure. I would you rather call the cops and tell them you killed the man and stole I his money? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You know I didn't. Four days ago. All right, then. And I've known it for three. So this won't suppose look I well. Suppose I call the cops. Suppose I stop supposing and start fixing. Okay. Hey. Call them, you mutt. Go ahead and call them. See if I care. At least they'll give me a square deal. 
You want me to call him? You heard me. But I'm warning you. If I'm pinched, I'll swear you were in on it. I'll see that you help me. If I fry, I'll get even with you. You wouldn't dare. You did. Yeah? Yeah. Then try it and see. Call him. Yeah. Okay, I will. Should have drew those eyebrows up just a little higher. He's got that poop look again. Information? Memphis, Tennessee. I want the number of the Hollywood police station. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Wait a minute, Vera. You wouldn't do that. Well, wouldn't do that, and I'll show you if I would. Take it easy now. Let's talk this over. This was early in the evening, and the conversation, while hectic, was at least pitched low. But as the minutes passed, and more obstacles to her plan popped into my head, the air got blue. Each word coming from our lips cracked like a whip. I reminded her that as Charles Haskell, I didn't even know my mother's name, where I'd gone to school, the name of my best friend, whether I had an Aunt Emma or not, my religion, and if I'd ever owned a dog. I didn't even know what my middle initial stood for. I, also I don't know why I did this movie. The real Haskell had a scar on his forearm. His people never saw that scar. He told me he ran away right after putting out the kid's eye. Yeah, but his father knew he was cut. It had to be some kind of a mark. So what? The old man's dead or will be. I hope by tomorrow morning's papers. Anyway, you could cut yourself a little, couldn't you? Boy, for that kind of dough, I'd let you cut my leg off. You're drunk and you're crazy, man. Well, go ahead. Turn me in if you want to, but I won't get mixed up in this. Besides, how do we know? Haskell was such a phony. Maybe it wasn't the man's son at all. Maybe he just dreamed it up. Well, dream it or not, you won't be dreaming when the law takes down Dream it or not. There's a cute little gas chamber waiting for you, Roberts. Let me overplay being drunk real bad. And I hear it's drunk, real bad. a cinch. Where's that phone? Vera. Leave me alone. Vera. Here. Smack her. I want a phone call. Smack coming in five seconds. I hate you, you stinker. You leave me alone. I'll let you alone when you promise to leave the phone where it is. You're drunk. You don't know what you're doing. You're hurting me. Will you promise? You're hurting All me. All right. You're hurting me. You hurt me. You hurt me. Sorry, but... And it's hot in here. Open up the window. It's not hot. Don't tell me. Now, do you do it or do I do it? This is bipolar in the 90s. You're no gentleman, see? In the yeah. 50s. All right, I'll open up the this window. This is before they knew what bipolar was. Vera, open the door. Please open the door. Vera, open the door. Don't use the phone. Listen to me. There's no way I, I can cut like the wire. You, Roberts. You're no gentleman, see? You hurt my hand. And I'm going to get even with you. If you don't open the door, I'm going to kick it down, Vera. Vera, don't call the cops. Listen to me. I'll do anything you say. Vera, let me in. I'll break the phone. Is he trying to bust the wire in two instead of just disconnecting it from the wall jack? Skeptics. I know. I'm on myself. Quickly, drag her in a ditch. In the Haskell business, how many of you would believe he fell out of the car? And now, after killing Vera without really meaning to do it, how many of you would believe it wasn't premeditated? Did I miss something, or did room, he not tell her his real name? Every last man of you would go down shouting that she had me over a barrel and I my only out was force. I don't know. The room was still. So quiet that for a while I wondered if I had suddenly gone deaf. And blurry. It was pure fear, of course. And I was hysterical. But without making a sound. Vera was dead. And I was her murderer. Murderer? What an awful word that is. I think Sue should but think twice before she, she marries him. Court. He's already what been with two people that's died within the, the last of things hour. Was looking around the room at things we'd bought was like looking into the faces of a hundred people who'd seen us together and who remembered me. This was the kind of testimony I couldn't rub out. No. 
I could burn clothes and hide bottles for the next five years. There'd always be witnesses. The landlady, for one. She could identify me, the car dealer, the waitress in the drive-in, the girl in the dress shop, and that guy in the liquor store. They could all identify me. I was cooked. Done for. I had to get out of there. While one side remained beside a dead body, planning carefully how to avoid being accused of killing him, this time I couldn't. This time I was guilty. I knew it. Felt it. I was like a guy suffering from shock. Things were whirling around in my head. I couldn't make myself think right. All I could think of was the guy with the saxophone and what he was playing. It wasn't a love song anymore. It was a dirge. There's but one thing to do. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Here we go with making it 30% darker again for some reason. Maybe you should invest in gloves. Seems like everywhere you go there's a dead body you've got to figure out how to not be my problems weren't solved. You know. I had to stay away from New no. York for all time. No, me either. Because Al Roberts was listed as dead and had to stay dead. And I could never go back to Hollywood. Someone might recognize me as Haskell. Then, too, there was Sue. I could never go to her with a thing like this hanging over my head. All I could do... How the hell did he end up back in Reno? Reno? I really don't know. I was in Bakersfield before I read that Vera's body was discovered. And that the police were looking for Haskell in connection with his wife's murder. Isn't that a laugh? Haskell got me into this mess, and Haskell was getting me out of it. The police were searching for a dead man. I keep trying to forget what happened and wonder what my life might have and been. And then I get to run around like David Banner. But one thing I don't have to wonder about I know. Someday a car will stop to pick me up that I never thumbed. Yes. Fate or some mysterious force can put the finger on you or me for no good reason at all. The end. Thank God. Don't understand any of it. Maybe it's better Thank that way. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget oh, to like, you're welcome. share, and subscribe to keep updated God, with our channel. Over. I gotta pee. Please send us your thoughts and feedback by writing on the comments well, section below. I don't know. I know less than I did when the movie started. Well, wasn't that something? It was something. I don't know what, but it was something. Ugh, oh, Jesus H. There's an hour and a half of my life I'll never get back. Uh, what in an hour and seven minutes? Felt like days. Yeah, I gotta say... Now I know why they didn't renew the copyrights on that film. Well, folks, this is going to end this edition of the Bob Gilbert's Variety Show on TV and HD. Yeah, sometimes I think uh, this one shouldn't be renewed copyright either. No, shut up. What? Never mind. Yes, we're going to end this episode, and we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll do more if you want them. So let us know. Leave a comment. Like it subscribe, lick it, whatever. And don't forget to join us next time on the Bob Gilbert Variety Show on TV and HD. For Chief Homer Diggins, Lorraine Bodie, and Marty Beckham, I'm Bob Gilbert saying so long, everybody.